Welcome everyone to my talk about um, OpenHPC. Um, my name is Adrian Reber. I'm part of uh, Red Hat's kernel team and I'm involved in OpenHPC for, for, from Red Hat because I used to run HPC systems before I joined Red Hat. So there's a, I had a chance to um, be involved again in my old area where I worked and so I said Yes, I'm interested to be a part of OpenHPC when, uh, when we joined in 2016. Um, the last time OpenHPC was here at FOSDEM was in 2016, so I thought this year might be a good point to um, tell once more what OpenHPC is and what has happened in the last three years. And Yeah, that's, that's what I want to do here. Give an update and see what ha has happened since. So the microphone is, is not working? The microphone is I have to speak up? Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, I, I wasn't aware. Um, so it's about OpenHPC. Um, okay, so um, my clicker doesn't work. It does work. So my, my agenda is, um, I first want to give a high level view what OpenHPC is. This is basically what I saw first when I looked at the project in 2016. Um, what was my first impression of the project? What does it provide? Then in the next step, I want to tell why the OpenHPC project was um, created, formed, why it exists. and. After that, I want to talk about what is OpenHPC in, in form of the project management, how the project is set up, who is involved in it, and some details about its usage. And then I want to talk about, again, what is OpenHPC and in detail, what does the project actually deliver for the users? What can the users use from the project? And the last point um, I want to mention is um, what will happen in the next time of OpenHPC and things we are currently discussing. So what is OpenHPC? When I first looked at OpenHPC, I saw it's a, it's a software repository. You can download RPMs and it's, um, it provides, um, you can download it um, through Yum and Zipper. So this already kind of means it's for CentOS 7 and slash 12. Those are the two platforms OpenHPC currently supports. And the, it supports the architectures um, x86, 64, and, and ARM 64. And this is sort of the first thing what, what you see when you look at OpenHPC, what, what it does. And now I want to um, talk about why OpenHPC. Um, this is, uh, so this basically depends how, how HPC systems are usually set up. So HPC systems have um, a bit of different, um, <coughs> different software requirements, um, what the users expect to be there, and what is usually available on, on HPC systems um, for the users. So one thing you, you usually see on HPC systems, it has multiple compilers, and this is, from different vendors, other compilers, and then they are in different versions. So you have multiple compilers from the same vendor in different versions. So because every user needs a special version, and so you try to provide those compilers for your HPC system. The same goes for, for MPIs. And you have different implementations of the standard, and there are different versions. and Different people need different versions, different implementations. And this goes on and on up the software stack for the for libraries. You need them all in multiple versions and, and so on. And one small example um, I want to make here is if you have three compilers and each in two versions, you already have like six permutations of compilers you want to install. And if you multiply this by three MPIs, two versions each, you already try to um, provide like 36 permutations of MPIs with the different compilers. And this is, is a point where most um, HPC sites are using some kind of automation because you cannot handle this without automation. And so this is a, um, this is a common setup for, for many HPC sites. So everyone is 
doing it in some way. And this is one of the reasons why the um, OpenHPC project was created. And its overall go goal is to reduce um, duplication of word work um, through a community effort so that um, everyone tries to come together and offer ideas and in case, uh, in case of uh, open HPC even software packages you can easily install to get an initial system running. So the project has a vision and a mission statement uh, statement this is the vision statement um, it's 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 sounds pretty visionary and I think one of the goal is um, to to make everything better and easier and um, focusing on setting up and, and running an HPC system and the, the mission statement is a bit more clear for me it's it's more concrete so they want to provide a software repository it's what I saw at the first glance when I looked at the uh, at the project and it wants to provide um, best practices so people who are who know how to run HPC systems will write down how you could do it if you set it up for the first time or if you want to change something so this is the list of the current um, project members it's a combination of um, industry partners universities um, some of the big labs in the US who are all um, involved in the project and they are trying to work on the things described in the mission and vision statement before it's a Linux Foundation project so it's I guess it's set up like many Linux Foundation projects we have a, a governing board where um, there's um, going on discussions and then there are the main technical um, discussions are going on in the technical steering committee um, it meets once a week it's open so if you're interested what open HPC does or if you want to get involved somehow you can join this weekly call it's it's docu documented on on the website and another thing is if you as an institution as a university um, want to join the project it's, it's free for academic partners so if you're interested in the open HPC project we, we welcome any um, further input help um, whatever you want to do contribute to the project so this is the list of the current TSC member it's a long list so from every um, um, member not every member but from a lot of members someone is part of the TSC um, there are different roles we have maintainers and and uh, people looking for for the test cases um, the people on the TSC are voted by the members and are part of the TSC for one year. The elections are each June, and currently um, we have a, we always have a project leader. It's um, Carl Schulz from the University of Texas. One thing the Open HPC project tries to do it doesn't try to force anything on you. So it's it's a big pile of things it tries to offer you and you can pick and choose and build exactly what you want so you, you you're not forced to use anything or anything we kind of provide so there are always different alternatives you can choose you can rebuild it for your needs you can use the binary RPMs we provide so it's it's um, it pr provides you a lot of um, tools which can which can help you in either way you need it um, this is um, a bit about the project history. The first um, discussion about um, an H HPC community project happened, uh, happened in 2015 in June at uh, International Supercomputing. And the first release uh, was then at Supercomputing 2015 in, in November. And then since then we do continuously um, have a release probably every every quarter so we um, update the software and do a new release and the latest release what was released in November is 1.3.6 and currently we are working on the next which is 1.3.7 and now I have a few um, 
diagrams about its usage. So this is the number of components over the time. So you see it's, 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 it's not a really big number, but it has some components. It's slowly grow, growing, so we're adding new, new things slowly to the project, which people are um, asking for, which people are submitting to the project and um, trying to get um, included. The next um, diagram is about um, how we, how many components change between the releases. So basically, which packages are updated. So the, the small changes are always only really um, minor releases, but um, on, on a, the normal releases, we get like 30% package updates. And then we have uh, another uh, diagram about our users so you see also the number of users grows slowly over the years um, so and this is the what people are downloading from us you see in the beginning they downloaded 1.0 and then they switched uh, pretty so they usually switch pretty soon to the new release people are some people are staying on the older releases and the only thing we are not sure yet what's happening here is in in in, in the last month a lot of people started to access 1.2. We are not sure what's happening there, but maybe it stops next month again, or we have to find out why people are still interested in 1.2. Another thing about visitors um, of the uh, of the build server. So the, the other thing was okay. So yeah, it's diagrams. I, I guess not so important. Um, this is about uh, what people are downloading. And now um, some details um, about what OpenHPC is in, actually is. So I already mentioned it's a, it's a software repository and it provides RPMs and the kind of the base of all our things is, is LMOD. It's an um, environment modules based uh, implementation in, in Lua. And the reason why we're using LMOD is um, that the Texas Advanced Computing Center tech is part of um, OpenHPC and they develop LMOD and so we have a very close connection with the LMOD developers which is good for us because we can get things fixed, change, uh, we can test things for them so it's a close collaboration which, which works pretty good I would say. Then um, above the, the environment modules level, level we have um, different provisioning tools. So the provisioning tools are used to set up your cluster. It installs your compute nodes and boots them and it's possible to run your nodes stateless and stateful. So Werewolf is part of OpenHPC and then the other one is XCAD which is basically providing same thing so you, this is a point where you already can choose how you want which tool you want to use to set up your cluster then we have um, monitoring tools like um, there's Nagios and Ganglia we have different resource managers to which are distributing the jobs on your cluster there's PBS Pro is part of OpenHPC and then we have also Slurm which is part of OpenHPC this is again a, a point where you can choose if you want to have this resource manager or the other one. And then on top of it, there are of course um, compilers, GCC. Then we have LLVM. Um, another thing which OpenHPC does, it, it does not provide the Intel compiler, but if you have an Intel compiler installed in your system, it will detect this and it provides all libraries and softwares which can use of the optimizations, can make use of the optimizations already compiled for the Intel compiler. And the same will happen at some point with the ARM HPC compiler, so it's, it's working in, in a similar way, hopefully soon. And then we have MPIs, Open MPI, MVARPITCH, MPITCH, more MPIs. Then we, as our software stack is not really big we um, provide spec for further software installation and easy build so you get a, a basic installation of a system with compilers and a few libraries but you if you need to install more packages you can easy, use easy build or spec to install software on top of your HPC system then we have um, container runtimes Charlie Cloud Singularity 
There are um, file system clients like Lustre and BGFS and additional uh, libraries. But uh, it's not just the software repository. Um, OpenHPC also includes, um, in my point of view, <laughs> excellent documentation and what we call recipes. So we have documentation, how to set up a cluster for each of the combinations we have. So provisionals, resource manager, OS, and CPU architecture. Uh, for each of those combinations, we have a documentation, how to set up the system. And the recipe is basically we're pulling out the, the commands you have, should type to set up your system in the recipe so you can just run the recipe and have hopefully a running system. There are also goals um, to um, port the recipes or at the same time as the recipes um, support something like Ansible playbooks to install the system and not just um, uh, long shell scripts. And I think there's later a talk about Ansible in, in combination with um, OpenHPC even here um, at FOSDEM later in this room. And the thing with these documentations, they are each completely tested with each release. So we have a test system where we do a bare metal install of, of clusters using InfiniBand and Ethernet only based clusters on ARM and on Intel CPUs, on SLAS and on CentOS. And we test um, all the software we provide and all the installation steps for each release. So we make sure that what the doc documentation we provide actually works. And once you have this all installed and running, you get um, a user interface using environment modules. And it basically looks the same independent of the operating system, independent of the architecture. So the users don't have to change any paths or name of modules. Open HPC systems will always come with the same paths and um, environment module names. So I have like three minutes. OK, so um, just a bit about upcoming changes in Open HPC. The next release will be 1.3.7. It will be released in the next three months, so probably in three months rather than tomorrow. Um, it will include the usual updates of packages which have been um, released upstream, and we will try to include them. The goal is um, to include um, a rebuild of our repository using um, the ARM HPC compiler. And last week, two weeks ago, we started discussions about separate, uh, supporting new operating system releases. There's um, slash 15 exists, and we um, have requests to enable it. There was the RHEL 8 beta released, and we're discussing how we should handle this. Because from our release numbering, this would mean um, we will switch to a 1.4 release, because 1.3 means you can upgrade it all the time, and you cannot really probably upgrade from 1.3 to 1.4. But doing this, this would mean that we probably have to drop the support for CentOS 7 and slash 12 because right now the community does not think we can support four operating system releases and the main problem is the testing. So we, we all, we built all our packages from a single source. So this, the building is not really the problem, but to make sure the result which we provide actually works uh, would require the testing and this is something we are currently discussing how to handle this correctly and when should OpenHPC um, switch to SLAS 15 and RHEL 8? Because people in the beginning are always not so interested in trying new op operating systems on their HPC system. So we have to find the right point in time. How do we deal with the old releases? How do we deal with the new releases? And I have a short overview here about links um, to, the, to the project our homepage, our CCCI system, our GitHub page with all the um, spec files for the packages. You can look at our CI infrastructure, how the current um, state of our um, packages are and how the testing goes. And now I'm already in the end. And thanks for your, um, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. And are there any questions?
the question was what is the best way to start helping us so um, if you have a problem already fix it and submit it um, submit a pull request we will um, I'm, I'm pretty sure we will include it if you think there's some package missing we have a submission process I think I, I listed uh, it's somewhere here Compo component submission so if you think there's something missing you can uh, submit the component submission and and this is, uh, will be included um, with every release so this every few months we can include new things you can I don't know have a look at the repository basically if something is broken you fix it we will include it Sorry, I, I'm not sure what, what this question is about. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's difficult to, to understand. Uh, this is a, a simple question. In fact, it's built by someone, or is this a, a, a consistent system? I'm sure there's a little thing and an uh, old internal dependency and testing and a bunch of voting in the way that you ensure the consistency level of the release. It's not evident to me. It's only a, a effect sort of. Okay, so if there's integration testing between the components, was it that? Yes. So we 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 do install testing, and we have um, for I would say for most of the libraries we have a test code which we run. But again, it's it's test code, so we we make sure that the provided library interfaces are, are working, and the test code runs, and that it can do MPI communication using the and nodes in our test cluster so there is a certain kind of uh, we kind of make try to make sure that that it works but it's not a com complicated uh, computation which we run our test system so, so we make sure that the applications and the libraries are working but um, I don't know at, at what point you can say they are 100% really tested so. 